Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Infinite Cup Podcast. I am your host, Robert Breton. This is an exciting episode. This is a live episode in the park. We just had a great time connecting. My man, Dridda, a.k.a. the Blissful Athlete, strength coach, nutritionist. Awesome, man. This is a real, legit yogi, ordained uh, Nathanya Yogi from the Acharya. And he's a you know disciple of the Bhagavan Street Nathanya. Okay, this is something that is very uh, you know powerful when you have that guru disciple relationship, when you're connected, when you're on the path, when you have the clarity of who you are and what you're supposed to do in this world. You know, we just had an awesome time connecting all things: the power of fasting, health, longevity, using yoga. These are ancient yogic techniques. Uh, he just happens to be on like a um, a fast too, a 108 day cleanse, a fast for spirituality, for living on prana. We had a great time connecting. I just really want to thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being a part of this magic. Thank you for taking the time to download the show. Please take two minutes and just leave a review on iTunes wherever you're downloading this podcast. It really helps the ratings, and we can get more people to join this satsang, join this conscious community to uplift this beautiful planet Earth. And thank you again you know for buying my book the real yoga on amazon thank you for supporting the show by using the affiliate links on the infinitecup.com all of that stuff thank you just sincerely thank you i really appreciate it the show has been awesome and really getting a lot of good support from you guys and i really just want to reciprocate that and send you that love right back to you so again guys this is an awesome show drida the man he's back on the show and this is awesome live you can check it on youtube or anywhere you want to download music thank you guys thank you so much here we go All right, everybody, welcome back to the Infinite Cup podcast. We are live in the park in San Dimas. Really excited for you guys watching on YouTube. You can see the video version. We are here. It is awesome just to be with like-minded people. It just feels great to have the presence of other people that are on the same page as you. You know what I mean? It feels good. It feels like a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having my wife and I here and getting to to meet your family more too. Uh, If if you didn't know, we already did something online and Mm -hmm. uh, so this is our first meeting in person together and absolutely right. It's always nice to get in the the presence and uh, get in the, the same frequency vibration that's with right. somebody in person so yeah yeah thanks for having us oh so blessed so blessed yeah for those of you that are new blissful Astley is the channel we were um let's see i think it was episode seven or eight if you want to go back and listen to the introduction uh we're not going to get into the full introduction here we're going to dive a little bit deeper into spirituality and health currently on a liquid diet is that correct yeah yeah day 24 something like that awesome super yeah. awesome and well we're just gonna hit it off talk about energy talk about why we do what we do we're both very into health and spirituality and we're gonna get right into it Are you ready yeah let's do it sweet <laughs> so 24 days and so first of all why why would you choose to do a liquid diet well I mean, there's there's a lot of different uh, reasons as far as you know. You look at you look at the previous masters, or even you know, as recent as somebody like Gandhi, like really exploring the body's possibility. Whether and and there's different reasons to get into it. The reason I'm interested in it is because I want to explore the the possibilities that are within this body. Yeah. Um, I, I was an athlete growing up and I always liked pushing myself, whether that was in the gym or in the heat of competition. And now being a yogi, I think uh, I, I like exploring that athletic dimension the, within me in different ways. And, yeah, I do too. Yeah, and my, my guru is always t- really focusing on uh, practicing what's called Nirahara Samyama. And that is a 21 day meditation practice, or not just meditation, yeah. but uh, a fasting practice where yeah. you can eat a few times throughout it. And I've done that five or six times. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's just like, I want to take it next level. And I really do want to explore the possibility of living off prana. And, and, and I know that's a possibility. And so yep. you're doing it right now. Yeah. So yeah. let's, I was just like, all right, let's dive in. Let's do it. And I, I declared 108 days and uh, it's been going good so far. Awesome, brother. Yeah. Just so excited. I just want to, for people listening, this is something that has brought us closer to the divine. 
Uh, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Because I think a lot of people are into fasting. A lot of things going around right now, especially with you know intermittent fasting and all this stuff. And I feel like it's still uh, you know body centric or material centric. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, uh, of course, yoga is a path for going within. Mm -hmm. And when we have the food as a structure, it can be enabling us. So when you take that away, you're opened up to this new possibility that you've never experienced before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, even when we're growing grinding the food what my girl says you're grinding on cognitions as well and yeah. so uh when when you just eliminate this whole concept of not eating and not chewing yeah. you're you're in a more thoughtless state and and you get to ex true. experience higher states of energy because yeah. you're not chewing and then of course we know on the physical level you know it takes so much less or it takes so much energy to digest yeah. food that yeah. you know, you're chewing etc so yeah 100 percent. it's just i just want to talk about it from that point of view because again a lot of people i feel like are fasting and stuff and it's something where um you get what you give in right mm -hmm. it's um it's one of those things the universe always gives you what you want I don't think it's, um, you know, if you want abs and you're fasting, then here you go. You're going to get some better abs, right? You're going to lose weight. All of those things are there. I'm just talking about the real potential with this as far as going within mm -hmm. and how it makes you really dive deep within because you don't have those distractions of food. Mm -hmm. So the smoothies, the liquids, whatever you can do to kind of slowly wean off of the solid, you know, more material food, mm. you'll be kind of getting more aware of these subtle energies. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about that in my book. I talk about that a lot because I feel, I feel like that is really where the magic is as far as just human existence, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like this obvious stuff in the material world that we can see. It's all about this real subtle energy that yeah. is really kind of beneath what we see with our two physical eyes. Yeah, and I think the body starts to tap into that and, and is attuned to that and kind of once you decide to shift gears, it's yeah. like it, it'll pick up with that. Yeah. I kind of find myself naturally now you know, I'm not chewing. My my cheeks were getting <laughs> sore. I was telling my wife, my my jaw is sore. I'm not chewing. Like yes. that's the problem. And yes. um, but I like I I'm naturally starting to do kachari mudra, where my mm -hmm. tongue I, I just feels right yep. to lift my tongue up and press it up against the roof of my mouth. Yes. I feel like more aligned. I feel yes. kundalini happening just yes. from that subtle change. And yeah. and I think that attunement does happen when you do things such as fasting. I agree 100%. Since you mentioned kundalini, that really um, you know sparks something because a lot of people that I've experienced are just simply living in those first two chakras, right? The mm. survival, procreation. And when you get out of those first two chakras, that's really where this magic starts happening, this you know awakening, right? The third chakra is kind of that barrier that keeps us in the heart. And then the higher chakras, the throat, the anya. And for me, when you get the food away, it's like the energy just goes up. Like there's really nothing stopping it. It's like... <laughs> If you're not watching this, I'm starting to get like bliss tears in my eyes. You just st speaking on that. Yep. I had a subtle visualization of, of Kundalini happening, raising yep. up and, and coming to this, this different level that maybe we're not used to experiencing on yes. a, on a, you know, a, a standard basis. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it, it happens, everybody. It's, it's real. It's, it's so blissful. Real. <laughs> it's, it's something to taste. You have to try it. <laughs> I, I, I completely agree. And I just want to tell people who are listening or, or, or watching, it's like, you got to take the time to do this. It's about priorities, right? Yeah. Um, I've tried doing a lot of extended fasting, like while holding my job, going to work and things. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's energy. You, your energy is expanding. Mm -hmm. You're getting really expansive. And you know, when I was going to work and doing those things at Whole Foods, even I was absorbing way more than what I wanted, right? Mm -hmm. So the food, the, it's like a barrier, you know, to the physical world and we're all filled like that. So mm -hmm. without that, you know, in our stomach and everything, you're just this expansive light being. So that's just what I want to say, you know, as a little disclaimer because yeah. uh, I think it's important just to have the right setting. That's all. And just being mindful about the people that you're around and all that kind of stuff because you're definitely going to absorb a lot more energy than you think. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think it you kind of get detached or attached to the Maya. You know, the more food, you're eating the heavier food that you're eating that yes. density that that's sitting within you and it does yes. affect your consciousness and and yes. in your day-to-day -day life so yeah 100 percent. and i would say even further um as far as like i do a lot of work to like detox right and mm. it's like i look at what i did in my youth and everything and it's like if that was just avoided then all this extra detox work i wouldn't have to go through yeah you know yeah exactly it doesn't have to for people listening that might think you know liquid diet is extreme or anything like that i would just recommend replacing w at least one meal with a smoothie mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. for sure 
sure right for sure and yeah. intermittent fasting is something that could help with that like fitting that into your diet but uh yeah in the evenings or morning time if you yeah. mixed in a, a smoothie or a liquid meal soup or something yeah um it's definitely harder if you're gonna I, i've been talking about it a lot lately how you know you need to get a bunch of food in you in the yes. middle of the day yes um uh, so just be aware of that that is when the agni is most high yes fire the digestive fire um so uh, yeah it, it, it if you're wanting to make the switch be smart with it and just start with one meal a, yep. a day where you're having liquids etc and, and I, yeah my recommendation would be morning and evening if you're going to do yeah, that i agree completely 10 to 2 is that key time when the yeah. liver is active we the body just needs a lot of calories yeah. especially if you're the kapha type or just anybody who needs a lot of high activity yeah i experienced the same thing i'm more vata but i just have this you know super high energy metabolism like riding my bike and doing a lot of active things and i caught myself doing like you know these 20 30 mile bike rides while i was fasting and everything <laughs> like really pushing that last one i did was almost 130 miles Whoa. and i had i had two figs that i foraged like on the trail while i was you know riding my bike but the same thing i'm like you you know pushing that envelope of where you think you can be you know yeah just wherever that is for you physically spiritually emotionally we got to get out of that comfort zone. Yeah. That's yeah. enabling us. Whatever, you know, fear you have or whatever, you know, people listening that's like whatever block you think you might have, it's in your comfort zone. It's wired in your comfort zone. Yeah. So creating that energy outside of your comfort zone is how you can start creating that change that you want to see in your own life. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, like I said at the beginning, uh, being an, uh, a former athlete, exploring that is really exploring going outside of your comfort zone, outside of your your going outside of your boundaries and and uh pretty some pretty cool things can happen when you do that <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> big time big time things you just wouldn't expect yeah 100 percent. yeah so cool i'm um, let's bridge the gap between spirituality and health a little bit let's talk about just um pranic foods sattvic foods mm. i think a lot of people listening are maybe just getting into ayurveda or understanding i mean veganism is like the base but that's a very uh, western word you could say and it's obviously involves i would just say ahimsa non-violence really at the core that's really what you know i'm about when it mm. comes to what i do with every aspect and i think diet is obviously what we all you know have to eat every day and do yeah. something so bringing in that act of violence is unnecessary with our food yeah. and that's where i would kind of start as far as the conversation with you know spirituality and health because if we're consuming that violence then that's the energy that we're you know putting out as human beings as well yeah exactly and i, I mean if, if you're watching or listening to this and you have, haven't seen dr masuro emoto's yes uh, you know your your energy your thoughts th those are getting infused into that food so whatever state you're in uh it's it's that more important for yeah. you to make sure that you're conscious about when you are cooking your food, etc. And, you yeah. know, when we were in India at uh, our guru's ashram, only sannyasis were cooking yes. food. Yes. And you weren't allowed to cook food unless yes. you were a sannyasi. So that energy, <laughs> that divinity is in your food as well. Yes. And uh, that, yeah, does, definitely has its, its place. And um, as far as the other like types of foods and things like that, um, if you want to keep it on, I think a, a, a simple way of looking at it is alkaline diet. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, making sure that, yeah, you're, you're mm -hmm. consuming alkaline foods like yeah. raw vegetables, etc. cetera. Yes. Um, keeping the body's pH balance correct and, yes. and avoiding all of those high acidity foods. And So true. Uh, the way I look at it too, um, the universe only created alkaline foods. Mm. Only. So everything on this planet that is really made from nature, that is truly organic, not the like Whole Foods sticker organic, but truly <laughs> organic, that is alkaline. Yeah. And when man started creating food, that's when acid came into play. Yeah. So we live in a world where it's honestly hard to de decipher between the two. You know, we, you know, hybrid foods, GMO, non-organic, blah, blah, blah. And a lot of it is acidic simply because of how it was grown. Yeah. So a lot of what I do when I travel or just getting food in general, it's really searching for, you know, the right farmers, the right people to get that real pure, you know, just the way it was grown. Yeah. Not even just the variety of fruit or vegetable that it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. and it's obviously always good to support the locally grown food. Yes. You know, we, we just signed up Priscilla and I for uh, this uh, company with incredible like mm -hmm. it's locally grown produce and they ship it to your door nice. you, you can order it online and everything you can kind of see what's growing see what's yep. available um, so it's it, what is happening and the, the future is going to be very very 
awesome in, yep. a, in a sense where yep. you can just kind of shop from your phone and or press order and uh, as long as you find that one source that you can trust yep. and is organic and, i agree yeah. my teacher always said that the uh, you know the food we got to get it as close to the energy source as possible right mm. so it's like you think of a carrot growing right if you just pull that carrot out of the ground and then eat it you know with like 30 seconds after it was pulled out of the ground it was just at its energy source which is the earth mm. and then you consume it mm. obviously that carrot at 30 seconds is high vibe yeah compared to one that's sitting on a shelf for yeah. you know days months if not years yeah right? yeah i would take that even further if you follow a medical medium or people that are listening i'm big into juicing and you know smoothies as well right mm. 30 minutes get this 30 minutes after you juice that orange is gone all the prana is gone interesting i didn't 30 know that. minutes wow. wheatgrass wheatgrass two minutes what yeah interesting see what i mean yeah chlorophyll because they think about the density mm -hmm. and i've tested this in alaska i brought believe it or not i brought my wheatgrass manual juicer with me yeah, and you all did. my things <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and i'm cranking out this wheatgrass and i'm just telling you like you can taste the wheatgrass shots even after five minutes and two minutes mm -hmm. and it's different interesting it even tastes different i don't believe yeah. them everybody you got to try it for yourself <laughs> yep i highly recommend <laughs> it i'm that guy that takes it to that level because i can feel those subtle differences yeah see what i mean if you're gonna do it you might as well get the most out of it yeah um alice you know my fiance gives me crap for it all the time too it's like i'll make her some orange juice and it's just sitting there you know i'm like you, you gotta drink this like i'm like pointing like you better drink this on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what i'm saying you know i mean i love geeking out on this but i'm just saying like again making that connection with energy and food right you can go get the orange juice on the shelf that's pasteurized and it's not even from oranges and it just tastes like oranges <laughs> yeah. and it's sugary and it's sweet and you can you know fill your belly and get all happy you know or you can tap into these energy levels and really use it to your advantage. Yeah. See what I mean? That yeah. little like six ounces of orange juice yeah. is way better. Oh my gosh. Like, and I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm kind of a snob about it now because obviously I can't drink the like store orange juice. And I mean, like when I see that stuff, it's, <laughs> it gives me a little cringe, but only because I know the potential. Yeah. I know what we could be doing. And now I just, you know, get like five or six bags of oranges when it was winter season and that's all I juice. Yeah. You know? So I just want to make that connection because a lot of people um, really need to dig deeper when it comes you know you could be juicing right now could be doing all the smoothies and maybe you don't have the energy you know what I mean maybe you have all these expectations but mm. really it's again in these subtle levels of awareness it's not in this big thing I know kale is in the news everybody's good but it's really these smaller more subtle levels of awareness we need to tap into yeah exactly exactly yeah. and 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 yeah like fasting looking at whatever it is you are consuming you do dial in more and more and more to your body and yeah. what it needs and what it doesn't like and it's yeah. really interesting because you're so conscious of what you're putting in yeah it's a simple what did I change what did I have yesterday or what did I have today and you can just simply go back and be like okay this isn't what I don't need. Yep. Like th my body doesn't like this one thing. Yep. And it, I mean, you can take your body to the next level, which just with that. I agree hundred percent. And even keeping a food journal too would help if yeah. you, for people listening, I want to take it to that, you know, level, um, that really helped me in the beginning, especially, um, for people that are trying to, um, really cater to some diet. You know, for me, I was struggling as like a raw vegan for a long time and doing a lot of juicing and everything, but there's something about potatoes that really work for my body. Mm -hmm. Like I could live off potatoes yeah, and yeah. feel amazing. Mm. I don't know if it's the Irish in me. <laughs> I don't know what it is, yeah. but I've, trust me, I've tried and tried. I tried to eat raw potatoes because I was like a raw vegan. Oh. <laughs> I tried all these things. And just again, like sticking to the title. See yeah. what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of people like call themselves vegan or call themselves something and you know, just to do it rather than really wanting the energy or the you know reason why they're doing it behind the scenes yeah interesting yeah. interesting I, I the the ability to try different foods is is there we have it now more than ever yes you know and so i think it's awesome that uh we do explore everything that is available to us and, yeah. and try it and and just enjoy that process as well I yeah. think people get do get so focused either on one on taste. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that could be a one big subject, but yeah. but then also they're just uh, I think well, what we were talking about before the the opportunity to have so many different options in front of you and sometimes we we get either overwhelmed and just stick to our comfort zone and yep. a lot of times that like that's our patterns and that yep. and then it just snowballs and then <laughs> and then we wonder why we put on 20 pounds and, and so exactly. uh, the it's time for us to have that uh i was saying before we jumped on to my wife choiceless awareness and mm. and kind of be able to sit and just look at all the options and, and yeah. 
and it's a power to not take any option that's in front of us. That's true. And that's really what I'm trying to explore right now is, is yep. eventually moving towards not having any food. And, and so uh, it's, it's really interesting just to see in general what, uh, what's available to humanity right now. Yep. No, I could not agree more. And this is a good segue, too, because what I tell people, um, was, you know, they ask me these questions. And when I was first getting into it, that really helped me was think about other sources of energy that you're consuming that are not food. Mm. Right. Mm. Because a lot of people think energy and food, like that's their only connection. Mm -hmm. They don't think of anything else. And for me, like when I meditate, I get a lot of energy. For when, sure. You know, we have yeah. very specific, uh, you know, pranayama and asana techniques to bring energy to the body. Mm -hmm. And when you're fat, when there's nothing in the body food wise, those techniques are a game changer. Yeah. And with, let's talk about that a little bit because I know you do those and go into that a little bit because people that are experiencing fasting or have tried it, that's really what it comes down to is these techniques yeah. of bringing more energy to the body yeah yeah so talk yeah. About that. well i mean pr prana can come into the body in in a number of ways the one that we kind of know most is is breathing yeah. and um and it it doesn't it's not the breath if you if you didn't know it's not the breath it comes with the breath it's like a imagine it as a as a truck that's delivering you your package mm -hmm. the uh the breath is the truck and the prana is the package um but prana can be absorbed in that space of thoughtless awareness and that's really what patanjali's main yes. message was mm -hmm. is that uh, you can absorb prana when the mind is in a state of no mind when, yes. when you're in that thoughtless uh, awareness and so now if you're wanting to absorb more prana then we can understand that we will absorb more if the mind is disseminated if it's if it's not active and so breathing and the mind being connected one of the pranayama techniques that i'm practicing is the nitidyan meditation where it starts with seven minutes of chaotic breathing mm -hmm. through the nose mm -hmm. and then uh after that there's seven minutes of intense humming and so you're with that deep vibration of mm, and like just one you're taking in so much prana life energy through that chaotic breathing and then you're like disseminating it or, or yep. dispersing it rather throughout the whole body and then when you focus the third part of this meditation is you focus on each chakra for one minute mm -hmm. and it's just like at the end i'm always like just in a space of pure bliss yeah. like just the kundalini shakti is incredible during it yeah. and so uh if yeah pranayama is ultimate uh when it comes to if you're wanting to get into a space of deep meditation yes and uh i know i know that's exactly what you're about too and um yeah. but yeah i just also wanted to touch base and, and call my wife out a little bit too on our way here we had uh we were listening to music uh -huh. and the thoughts that you have around you or the words that are said around you they affect your energy as well so and, true. and so in those spaces of uh I'm just gonna uh, just for my wife. She, we stopped the music and everything. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, when uh, always when we're in that space of meditation, that's when thoughts are most powerful as well. I agree. So choosing very um, uh, conscious thoughts and yes. uh, and that's where you know you can go a deeper layer and that's where Sanskrit is the most powerful yes. Yes. Uh, form of language, that vibration, that frequency in itself. And so yeah. um, really being aware of, of thoughts as energy as well, even when you're in a meditative space. And that's yes. why a japa japa is, is, is what it is. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And for me, you know, getting more into fasting and more doing that, it made those practices even more important. Yeah. Because if you, again, if you have the food in your stomach and obviously you think it could be a little distracting, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, that honestly became I love saving animals I love all the things when it comes to veganism for me that clarity in that meditation and everything is why I do what I do yeah see so because um, for people listen like this is infinite it just doesn't stop you know this is something that uh, I aspire to it's yeah. something that you wherever you think you had a limitation it just gets completely <laughs> disintegrated right there yeah, yeah. so um, I just want people to make that connection because a lot of the things that we're doing on the day-to-day -day can be amplified with these techniques yeah. and for me I, I know I notice a day when I go especially with the baby boy and my new son and everything it's like um, you know I might go a day without doing my practice in the morning or something I can really feel it yeah you know yeah so at the end of the day every whether it's a fast or anything that you're doing to kind of change it I feel like it alters your priorities a little bit mm -hmm. right yeah like I missed that practice the other day and so all of a sudden I want it even more yeah you know what I mean like it yeah. makes my uh, drive and passion for it even more yeah you see? yeah um, 
I think it's important too, just the consistency. That's all, mm. because it's one thing where um, it's like a programming for your body. Mm -hmm. When I like for me, um, I've done a lot of liquid diets, a lot of things that you've done as well, and I've just incorporated it into like my everyday life now. Mm. You know, uh, a lot of uh, just tons of liquids, and I might just have one meal, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. But it's more of like going in with the flow, mm -hmm. and not this like fixated structure thing. Maybe mm. that's just my personality. Oh no, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? It's yeah. like oh, I gotta do this then, and I gotta have this here, and I gotta meet these calories, and blah blah blah. What I'm saying is energy triumph of all of that mm -hmm. you know what i mean prana those techniques um, don't have a restriction like they really yeah. expand our, our awareness more than any type of uh, food ever could yeah mindset is an energy you know yes. like you get into the right mindset and that's all that you need uh, we we my wife and i were living in india and we would on a daily have three and a half hours sleep sometimes three hours sleep and it was our mindset that really helped us with yes. that and and it was our mindset that destroyed us too you know like <laughs> yes. if we're if we're waking up we're like oh man like uh, this, we just love three hours and we gotta get up. like yeah. like like your mindset is a form of tapping into energy so true i would say that it's the same like the thoughts and the physical mm. i remember uh, one of my favorite books that really inspired me was autobiography of a yogi mm. paramahansa yogananda and there's a very specific story about there where there's a fly he's a little young boy and um there's a fly in the room and his guru Sikh Tukswar is there and he's like go ahead and kill it he's like you already did and he's like wait what are you talking about he's like you just thought about killing the fly He's like, you should go ahead and just do it because in your mind, you already did. So there's mm. no separation there. Mm. And when people understand that, the consciousness and their thoughts changes completely. And mm. I catch myself, even with the thoughts. Like, it's like one thing when you, you know, like have that mouth, like, oh, I said that. But it's another, like, I catch myself like, oh, don't think that, Rob. Like, what, yeah. what just happened? That, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Even before it reaches the outside. So mm. I can catch myself in these little moments and I can see where the energy dictates. And that's where I know where I need to do my work as far as shifting those thoughts. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I forgot about that. So I read the book, but I, mm -hmm. I forgot about that story. Yeah. That's just kind of like my Bible. I read a lot. It's just my, like, everybody needs some sort of thing to kind of hone them into. Mm -hmm you know, that vibration. Mm. Autobiography Yogi is something I play in the background. <clears throat> I read the stream of Bhagavatam. Just re every day you need something to mm. just anchor yourself into that. So yeah. whatever that is for you, you know, the listener, just go for it, whatever it is. For me in the beginning, it was nature mm. when I didn't have any sort of, you know, mystical or yoga, anything. It was mm. just nature yeah. as a young kid. And I knew I tapped into that. I yeah. knew there was something bigger than me that I tapped into. Yeah. And I just wanted to do it every day. Yeah. And here I am, you know, 30 years later still mm -hmm. doing it. That's all it, it is. Yeah. And the, the, the saying, you are like the five most people you surround yourself with. Yes. That's an energy. Like nature can be one of those five people. <laughs> be yes. all five of them. <laughs> so true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. That, and that's an important, the importance of Sangha. You know, mm. spiritual community, making sure yeah. that you're you're with the right people that are encouraging you to live in those yeah. higher vibrational frequencies, uh, living with high in intense energy. Yeah. So for sure, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I just want to throw some tidbits, some tools, some superfoods out there for people listening that are, you know, wanting to incorporate some things. One thing that I've tapped into for a long time is the sea moss. You guys got to check that out. If you've not heard of this, it's the sea moss that is, you know, in the ocean. The way I look at this um, is we need, the human body needs everything from all layers of the earth. Mm. So do you know Sheila, Sheila G? Have you heard of Sheila G? No. That's another one. Since you're doing this liquid fast, I would highly recommend Sheila G. Mm. It's another just super concentrated, super, basically, you've heard of spirulina, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like that. But spirulina is the algae layer, mm. like the green layer of the earth. Mm. Sheila G is one underneath, like the mud rock layer. Oh, okay. See what I mean? So then you have the ocean, mm. then you have the air. So it's like we need food, you know, from all of these categories mm. to like balance our system, mm. you know? I can just feel my wife third eye blowing <laughs> up right now wanting to talk about Ayurveda and health yeah. and the elements involved in We'll food. get her on the show <laughs> soon. Don't you worry. <laughs> I just want to, um, yeah, this just goes along with fasting or um, just liquid diets in general yeah. because it's one thing to try. I've done it on like just mono meals. I love just doing fruit and things like that. It's just when you incorporate these superfoods, it kind of takes that edge off. I'm sure if you've experienced that yeah. you know, into these more fragile states. For me, I just get so high vibe. I get kind of erotic with my, you know, energy it's kind yeah. of all over the place yeah. so it kind of grounds me a little you know hones sure. me in a little bit more for sure yeah i'm getting jacked up just talking about it <laughs> yeah. uh, but your body is like 
like uh, my I was born and raised in a, in a race car family so my dad works on cars all the time like just high performance vehicles in yeah. general yeah. you know your body is a high performance vehicle to, like to the max obviously and yeah. those subtle differences those little additions the getting yeah. the right minerals in like you're yeah. talking about with CMOS yeah. uh, antioxidants you yeah. name it you start adding those little things into your car and and if you want to take the race more seriously yeah. you're going to feel the difference and you're going to notice how fast your vehicle can go. Yep, 100 couldn't agree more. Could mm-hmm. not agree more with that. And it's just when you combine all of these tools together, then you're set. You yeah. know, it's not it's not one, just one spoke on the wheel sort of thing. Yeah. You really got to look at this from a holistic approach. Yeah. And when you immerse yourself in nature and you have the superfoods, you have the minerals, you got everything your body needs, then you can, you know, your asana practice or your meditation, whatever you're doing, it's just that much better. It's just, you know, really getting more complete as far as how you feel inside that wholesome kind of feeling yeah yeah it's it's really uh it, it's an awesome journey so if somebody's listening or watching this too like uh they're already on the right track you're already there keep yep. keep exploring that and, and and keep diving deeper and, and yep. you won't need our our advice it'll be your sakshi praman it'll be your experience as well yeah i agree it's all about that experiential learning that's the the fuel that'll keep you going yeah the, that you know energy that you get that clarity in your mind that's the thing that's going to keep you going on yeah this. yeah yeah let's just talk a little bit um just about any other practice like sun gazing or any other practice um, like i said besides food that is bringing more energy to your body yeah well i mean i love training intensely yeah um and i i've always i i know that you know there is a there's a couple ways of looking at it but mm-hmm. Asana practice, uh, intense workouts, that for me is a, a programming system. Yes, I agree. And so you can program your body with whatever intention you're moving it. Yeah. And and so having that as an understanding, that is a, a source of energy that I'm wanting to tap into more and more. Yes. But that's that's where we also got to crack the coconut of the logical mind yeah. that is saying like, you idiot, <laughs> yep. you can't live <laughs> off of this. Yeah. <laughs> so that journey is is something that I'm tapping into as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've I've all, I've really been leaning in on my guru. He's given us what's called the Mahavakya, and it's a, a, the ultimate chant. Basically, yeah. it's Om Nitananda Padma Shivoham, and we just I chant that continuously over and over whenever I'm reminded of it. I don't yes. do, I'm not an expert and do it 24/7. <laughs> yeah. um, but when I do bring like r- remind myself of that japa, that chanting, that is a, it is a source of energy for me. I agree. Um, there was one day I it was like two weeks into my my fast and. And uh, I do an evening workout Mm -hmm. and uh, right at the end of it, I was hurting. I was like, uh, my, my, my stomach was just craving food and, uh, I just had to check in. I had to check in and I did it with Mahavakya with this, uh, Japa and, um, and it helped so much. Like I just reset and it was a a mindset kind of like I said. Um, and so I, I could really just beat that one down uh, continuously like yes. the thoughts and the words and the vibrations those are those are energy sources that you can really cling to and yeah. and uh, like a train ride in a sense that you just got to hang on to i agree more it's transcendental right mm. it, it transcends those limitations that yeah. we that we think we have those blocks those material blocks yeah and that's the what, there's just the beauty of sanskrit language in general the uh, you know uncontaminated language that is just pure sound vibration yeah versus some uh you know, opinion or something like when we say the English dictionary, it just has different condensations versus the Sanskrit language. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's just important. Even if you don't, that's the cool thing is that you don't even have to understand it intellectually. Yeah. That's the power of this. See? Mm-hmm. And I actually kind of like doing that, like bypassing the intellect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like just give it a pat on the back. Like it's cool, bro. You don't need to understand. Just sit here. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, just, it's all good. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you get the experience, you get the benefits from it mm-hmm. without completely intellectualized. Like I've been to so many kirtan stuff, especially in the beginning which Kirtans, is like, what did they say Kirtans, yeah. what and then you're somehow leaving there just high you're yeah just high vibe you're feeling yeah. great you know? yeah so i just for people listening like if this is completely new to you i mean i would just go to a kirtan i would go to my nearest meditation center or any yoga class and just go yeah you know because yeah because that's really how it starts yeah if you i don't know if you don't know what kirtans is is basically just dancing and exploring the like just opening yourself up completely and just enjoying the flow of the music and 
for me, that was that was uh, something that I had to break through. Like, yes. I, I'm like, come on, what what kid? Uh, how many kids can relate to going to those you know school yes. dances and standing on yeah. the side? You know, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. I was also that guy, but I also got some moves. <laughs> I also got some moves. Yeah. And uh, Kirtan's is just an awesome way of just expressing, going with that flow yeah. and just tapping into that energy that, that, that is there because everybody's dialed into it and it's yeah. so, so blissful. Yeah. It's so fun. I mean, I was the same way. You can, you know, listen to that monkey mind that's like, what are you doing? Why are you jumping like this? Why are you clapping? Why, you know, or you can just let that go and embrace it. You know, yeah. well, you always see the new people at the Kirtan doing the same thing, just standing on the side like, oh my God, oh my God, like I'm really here. I'm really here. <laughs> and then the people in the middle, like right next to the band, you know, just jumping and ju like it takes some time. And I love that because usually it's alcohol or whatever for most people, right? Like they go to the bar, they get their inhibitions down yeah. from drinking. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like we have to use these. The, here at the Infinite Cup, you know, I just talk about what's natural and sustainable, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, the alcohol is only going to get you so far. Yeah. It'll work. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying it'll only get you so far. Whereas this Kirtan, this is from, you know, Lord Chaitanya over 5,000 years ago. This mm -hmm. is something that was brought into us as a science. Like this is how you do it, you mm -hmm. know, and it's sustainable. It works. You mm -hmm. can use this to get this uh science because it's easily replicated yeah say so that's what's cool i like kind of demystifying a lot of this stuff because people you know just think yoga is just you know meditating silently under a tree until you're enlightened mm -hmm. right like it's just it just does not work that way mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pr prana itself is absorbed in kirtan so yes. it is a yoga practice to dance mm -hmm. and get into that space of just flowing with the divine because you're taking in prana it's samana yeah. really it's getting dispersed throughout the body yeah. and you will feel it like you're like you mm -hmm. said at, when you're leaving you're like you're high yeah you are high on life you are mm -hmm. high like with padamashi with the divine just yeah. resonating throughout your being yeah i just bring it up too because my you know my head just gets it wants to intellectualize it and that's when the high goes away mm. see what i mean like that flow state is the flow mm. has nothing to do with your intellect mm. nothing it's mm. it completely past that so yeah i'm just you know i try to you know hang on to that high and keep it with me throughout the day right mm. that's the, whether you're meditating in the morning or go to a kirtan or anything you know the goal here is to stay in that high vibrational place and mm -hmm. to carry it with it's contagious too that's the other thing i don't know if you know this, but you walk around somebody's not feeling well they instantly get it without any words or any sort of exchange yeah so to me i definitely envision you know this sat yuga this you know world where we're all on that level together for sure and it is just beautiful Absolutely. Yeah. It's only a matter of time, really. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's end game already. <laughs> but if you are listening to this, it, it's and it starts with us making those changes and, and living those truths for sure. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. Mm -hmm. Well, cool, brother. So let's wrap it up. Um, any other last words or any other tidbits you want to get anybody that's going to try a, a, you know, a smoothie or go on a liquid diet or a cleanse or a fast right now? I, honestly, I would... I would try Nirahar Samyama. That's so it's it's a three day, then a seven day, and then an eleven day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can eat after three days. Yeah. Um, you can eat after seven days, and then you can eat after uh, ten days. And it's an opportunity to at least like start exploring that possibility. Yeah, so agree. it's like a three level stage thing. Yeah. Um, so you don't think that you have to jump in and go for you know a twenty one day straight yeah. liquids only you i would know? not recommend that either yeah it's, yeah you can do a lot more damage than what's good especially if you just don't know another thing too since you mentioned that i think anybody could fast it's mm. about how you break the fast mm. is the most important part yeah yeah that's and, what i would say yeah absolutely and and so but ultimately exploring I, i'd really yeah. just encourage people to explore the possibility because yeah. it is there your body has the innate intelligence no yeah. matter what your mind is telling you i know you can do it and deep down you know you can do it it's just breaking that barrier that going past that comfort zone yeah 100 mm -hmm. you guys can do it it's easy it's a segue and the other thing too is juice anything like you're getting nutrients right that's the other thing there's mm -hmm. just so many different types and fasting could even be taking away from one thing that you're not um doesn't even have to be food right i just want to mention that real quick for people that um are you know have some thing in their life that's not serving them whether it's uh, you know technology or a job or, or whatever it is like you need to fast from that yeah it was cookies for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> good well way to call yourself out on it you know what i mean i do the same thing it's like you get situated with something you get comfortable and you're like okay this really isn't getting the energy i want anymore yeah but now you know what to do about it yeah See exactly I mean? exactly yeah. but no I, I i don't want to take away from that no, really valid yeah. point which is fasting from the music that you yes. might be listening to to uh, 
the, the pornography yeah. is such a big one. I feel like right now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. no fab. A lot of people just sexual energy in general is being wasted every mm. single day. So, um, yeah, I just want to say that fasting goes beyond food. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. yeah. A- absolutely. Absolutely. So, opening yourself up and and exploring those different dimensions as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, brother. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for doing the live show. This was awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. How can people find you? Let's plug your channel. Let's let's talk about where you are on social media and all the good stuff you're doing in life. Blissful athlete. Um, whether it's on Instagram, YouTube. Uh, I'm not too active on Twitter, but if you just typed in blissful athlete, that's yeah. that's my handle. Um, I'm a Nithananda yogi. I'm a, so I'm an ordained Nithananda yoga acharya. So uh, living the lifestyle of an authentic yogi. So yes. uh, that's really what uh, what I like to be known for. I should say first and foremost. And yes. um, if you're interested in learning more about authentic yoga um, and, and living that lifestyle, then then that's what my channel is really about. I would say. Yes, it is 100%. I dig it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, thank you so much for having me here uh, yeah. and, and getting to meet you and your wife in, yeah, in person. Course. This was awesome. So uh, my wife and I are pretty excited about it. She's yeah. playing with your baby right now. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I'm, I'm nervous about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hormones are a real thing. Watch out. <laughs> Well, awesome, brother. I'm sure I'll have you on the show again. This has been amazing. Thank you for everything. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, namaste.